Hello and welcome to another New Ideas Review, this time The Pocket from Mike Me. Mike Me are launching this on Kickstarter and I have a pre-production sample. It borrows heavily from the technology in their gold and silver condenser microphones. This time round they've turned their attention to lapel microphones. It's simple to operate and the large button on the front allows you to start and stop recordings amongst some other things. On the bottom edge are some other controls and sockets. The plus and minus buttons adjust recording level. You've got a headphone socket, a USB socket which allows you to both charge, offload files and use the device as a USB microphone. You've also got a Bluetooth button and a power button. On the top is the mini XLR locking connection for the microphone and on the back there's a quarter inch tap thread. Also on the sides are some small holes for attaching a belt clip. And just in case you're wondering, all the voiceover has been recorded on the Mic Me Pocket, so you can judge the quality for yourself. There is of course the ubiquitous app, which enables a lot of additional functionality. You have the ability to see the remaining battery life and storage capacity. You can adjust front and rear camera settings to the maximum that your phone will allow. And you can also add watermarks and intro and outro videos in the branding section. Diving further into the menus, you can also see your input gain and whether you have it set to auto or manual. You can adjust the headphone volume here and even extend the volume if required. You can see your serial number, software version, and even change the quality from 44.1 kHz M4As up to 96 kHz uncompressed WAV files. All these are recorded at 24-bit. I've got the Pro version with the Pro microphone, and normally bundled microphones at this level are fairly low end. They can't compete with the industry's best. However, for the money, I think it's pretty difficult to beat. The self noise on it is fairly low, but I do think that bass response is a little on the heavy side. Below about 180 Hz, there's quite a lift which should be tamed in software something I'm told will be supported in later versions of the app. As usual, the included windshield is rather difficult to locate snugly onto the microphone and will probably be the first thing you lose. The app enables three main modes of operation, video, audio and remote. Now, audio and video enable you to record the sound on the device itself and also transmit it wirelessly to your phone. Remote only allows you to record the audio on the pocket itself. You can also choose to record your smartphone's built-in audio at the same time. It has both auto and manual level. Manual is denoted by the yellow accent both on the LED and in the app itself. You can control the level by moving the slider up and down or using the plus and minus buttons on the pocket. If the audio gets too loud and is clipped, then the LED blinks. Switching to auto level when you set up means that the LED turns pink and you get the associated change of color in the app as well. You can still adjust the level here with the slider but it will automatically dip the level if it detects a lot of peaks. Of course, the killer function here is the auto-sync feature. If you wander out of Bluetooth range and the level drops, you've basically lost communication between your smart device and the mic me. If you get back into range, you'll see it picks up automatically. But what about the lost parts? Well, these are automatically recovered when you hit the stop button as the two sync very quickly, in fact, faster than real time, to get the audio back that you've lost. In the media section of the app, you can gain access to your files in the video and audio section. You can edit them, mix them, and then you've got various options for export. In fact, if you use the Dropbox option, you actually get separate files for each of the recorded audio tracks, as well as a mix. I've been using this pre-production version for over a week now, and I'm pretty impressed. Although, as usual, there are a few niggles. Most of them are software related and can be easily fixed, or so I'm told. You have to remember that this is very early days and effectively I'm beta testing this unit so any ideas or bug reports I've got get fed back to the company straight away. It's been less than a week since this was launched on Kickstarter. They've already reached their funding target but I'm hoping this video will get them some more. Thanks for watching. See you next time.